Hey guys, Dustin with the PVC Pros doing this video on a simple Facebook campaign setup for tour operators. So I'm doing this video as kind of a short version, hopefully high impact video that covers some of the basics that we have questions around, things that could help you guys kind of get the info, info you need to move on to the next step. And then I'll probably do some follow-ups around going more in depth on each item. But for right now, what I want to do is address the question we get all the time, which is Facebook ads, you know, what's the best way to run them? Uh, what kind of campaign should you do? What kind of audience should you target? So I'm just going to cover a very simple one that most operators can implement. They can do it themselves. They can hire us, whatever they want to do. Um, but it's pretty easy to understand, pretty easy to follow. And I'm going to cover about eight or nine slides, really, really short, and just kind of get to all the high level points. So let's go ahead and jump right in. Okay, so simple Facebook campaign setup. The overview we've got, we're going to cover some of the different campaign types you can use, which are website and lead ads. Generally speaking, there's other types. Targeting, um, who you want to target, people traveling to your market, remarketing, maybe using lookalikes. Some budgets based on the audience size. That's something that we get questions about all the time. How much budget should we spend? Uh, what types of creative you guys want to use, whether it be video, images. Really, it just matters about what the creative looks like, in my opinion. Um, and then tracking leads and sales, which is going to be super high level because there's a lot of different ways to look at that. But we'll get some of the key points to keep in mind as you go through it. And again, we can dive deeper on any of these things. Just need to get feedback from you guys as to what you think you want to see more of. So let me go ahead and jump right in. As far as campaigns to create, so two really simple campaigns that any operator could run are remarketing campaigns, which seem quite obvious. Usually people who have been to your website, in our case, we say at least the last 90 days or more, mainly because you don't usually have enough people in a shorter period than that to create a good size audience to show ads to. That's not always the case. It depends how much traffic you get from you know Google search or from affiliates or from partners or whatever you have. Maybe you've got some, um, some other traffic channels that you get a lot of people to the website. If you do great, you can try shorter periods of time, but we think at least the last 90 days is typically good for most operators, and again, also depends on the time of year. And then we also want to target people who are engaged users. Those are people who have interacted with your Facebook or Instagram pages or posts. Maybe they watched videos that you have. They've taken some other action. So these are great, warm audiences that have heard about you already probably somewhere else. And we could hopefully show them an ad to get them to take that final action, which is booking or either doing research for somebody else in their family, and they're going to share your experience with that person. Um, super high impact and low cost campaigns to run. The other one is a local campaign. We just call it a local campaign. Um, but generally what we're doing is we're targeting people who are traveling to your location. And so Facebook gives you an option to create an audience for people who are in your location, but they don't live there. And so their criteria is that people live more than 125 miles away from that location. So it's great when people are traveling from out of town into your location. Um, we can just get in front of those people alone and we don't have to sh show our ad to everybody in the entire location, including locals. So that can save you a ton of money on ad spend and focus your ad budget on the most important people. Now it's not listed here, but a lookalike uh, audience that could be its own campaign. Again, a lookalike audience is where you're basically telling uh, Facebook or Instagram to find people that are more like a certain group of people. And so what we recommend is using groups of past people who booked and using that as an audience uh, to create a lookalike from. The lookalike audience is around 2 million or so people, uh, which is probably, sounds like a lot because it is a lot. You also probably want to layer in some of the, you know, targeting people that are only traveling to your location. Uh, if you want to do an in-market lookalike kind of campaign, or if you just want to hit people all over the place that might want to book with you and they're not in destination yet, you could try that. I do recommend having at least its own ad set, if not its own campaign just so you can keep track of the spend and the performance for that, uh, for that particular ad type and that audience. Let's talk about ad planning. Actually, before we get into ad planning, let's go, one, let's go back one step to campaigns. So these would typically be conversion campaigns or depending on the size of the audience, it could be you know, reach campaigns if you just wanna get in front of everybody you possibly can at least once. Uh, there's also lead ad campaigns. Lead ad campaigns are great for lead generation Maybe you want to create a campaign that is made to build up an email list. You can do that with a coupon code, with some kind of a special offer, maybe with a guide of things to do while they're in the market, in your market. Um, those are great um, campaigns because lead ads 
don't require you to use a landing page. You don't have to worry about changing your website. You can have people fill out the form directly on Facebook, sync that form up with your email system. If you're using one like ours, Conversion Assist, it's really easy to do that or anything else, MailChimp or these other, um, these other types of email services, you might have to use Zapier, but basically get them onto a list and have, you know, add them to your nurture sequence or your newsletter, whatever else you're doing to turn those people into customers. So back to ad planning. Uh, some of the key points to think about here are using attention grabbing images or video. So things that are visually appealing, you guys probably know all about this, but people having fun with your experience. If they're on a, you know, you see people smiling, laughing, pointing at, you know, some cool thing on your, your tour, your experience, that works really well. If it's a video, maybe it's them having a great time at a high point in, in, the, uh, in the tour. Um, highlights of it, maybe there's like certain points of interest that you get to visit, or maybe there's certain, you know, again, high points in, in the activity that you want to share with them. You can capture that in images and videos, that's super powerful. And then customer testimonials or people that are just saying positive things. You could use static images with reviews. You could use videos where people are telling, maybe telling the camera, telling you how great their time was. They could be really short and maybe mashed up together into a video that just has several, you know, different people saying how great it was. And those testimonials are really good for remarketing because you've got people who are already aware of what you offer and now they're just getting basically sold on it. So that could be a great avenue for those types of people. Also use ad copy that speaks to your target audience. You can do this in a couple of different ways. Um, you also want to speak to the Facebook algorithm. So the ways people have done this in the past, which are not really mentioned here, but you've probably seen this before when they're like, you know, hey, Miami travelers or whatever. Or, hey, like, I guess the ways you might see this outside of travel will be like, you know, hey, Miami homeowners. And they're trying to call out their audience in the ad that could potentially work. Um, and just talking about, you know, hey, you, you know, are you in Miami for the weekend or for the month or whatever? You're looking for something fun to do while you're here, that kind of a thing. Um, and then coupling that with what the experience might entail. So now you're kind of like, not just calling out the person, but calling out like what the activity is or the outcome would be or that, or that type, type of thing. Sorry, it just makes it easier for um, them to understand what it is they're gonna get out of this experience. So looking for a fun time on the water, ready to have a blast with your closest friends, maybe you're trying to target groups or birthdays, things like that. Um, you've never experienced, you know, Miami like this before, like something like that, which would make people like, man, you know, I'm here, I wanna experience you know, this location or I wanna have this fun time or yes, exactly, I wanna do it with my friends while I'm here. That's the kind of thing you might want to consider in your ad copy. So a little bit more emotive, a little bit more, you know, speaking to the end result, which is a great time or having fun, not just, you know, book a jet ski or, you know, book a wine tour or whatever, right? Just talk more about the experience and the excitement they're going to get from it. Next would be making sure your landing page is on point. So this has more to do with taking people to the right page of the website. If you're going to drive them to a page of the website, um, generally a lot of people just send people to the homepage. If you've only got one experience or one thing they can book, it might make sense to do that. If you've got several different options, you probably want to take them to the category page for that product or that experience. So if you've got, you know, let's just say you do wine tours as a example of a category, but you've got, you know, food and wine, you've got, you know, a full day, you've got a half day, you've got a few different options, probably take them to that, that wine tour page. They can choose the options below it. That would make sense for them, would be a good starting point. Um, you also want to make sure the page is good on mobile. Most of the traffic you're going to get from these ads is going to be mobile. And in travel in general, it's usually mobile. Um, so make sure the page looks good. They can see everything. There's a phone number if you want to get phone calls. Easily visible on the page. That's easy for them to find. Um, just look at it as if you are going to book yourself. And does it look right to you? Do the images all show? It are, is text jumbled up? Does it all fit? Just look at it from that perspective and just make sure it's good to go. And again, not just send them to your homepage and hope they can find their way around. Uh, you also want to probably have three to four different image uh, image or ad variations. It could be different images or it could be different copy. Um, I would do some combination of the two. Creative is probably the more powerful one though, the images itself. So you can avoid banner blindness. So a lot of times if you have a say three or four ads, Facebook's gonna favor one really heavily. A second one probably is gonna be the runner up and the other one or two are gonna get very little traffic. But having different ad variations in there will help you as people start to see your ad a little more often, gives Facebook other options to show them. And you can also, you know, see how often one is getting shown over the others using a metric called frequency. 
And you can find that by looking at your columns in Facebook and adjusting them to show you the frequency. And that will tell you how many times the same individual has seen that particular ad. And so for remarketing, it's very quick and easy for those that frequency number to be high, meaning they've seen the same ad multiple times. And it's not really bad if they see it a few times. Um, I'd say anything over maybe five to six might be overkill um, for remarketing. If it's for a cold audience, you might have a very small audience you're trying to spend too much money on. And in those cases, you might just wanna you know, rotate through the ads a little bit faster. But having three to four different ads already in play means you can you know, turn one off when it's getting played out. You can you know, let Facebook kind of find one that's gonna work the best for them in their opinion. And then just eyeball the stats to make sure that's what's happening in real life. Also, as far as budget, this is a question we get all the time. How much should I spend on Facebook campaigns per day? So for remarketing, we can see anybody, if you have a very, very, very small remarketing list, you can spend a couple bucks a day up to maybe 10, 20 bucks a day tops if you're spending a lot of money or you have a lot of traffic on your website and your audiences are healthy sizes and it's maybe season. If you're doing our local campaign or are you gonna look alike, we'd probably be into the same rule. You can spend anywhere from 10 to $30 a day or even a lot more. Um, again, these are more like the starting point. Uh, budgets are not saying you can't spend more of those. It just means that starting out, you'll probably be fine here for the most part, unless you get a big operator with a lot of traffic then those numbers completely change, and it can be dramatically different. But one way to look at this is based on audience size. So Facebook charges you a CPM, which is a cost per 1,000 impressions. So whether um, they show the same person an ad more than once, you still get charged for that impression. And so what you don't wanna do is you don't wanna have an unreal, like a crazy high, maybe not even crazy high, but let's just say a, a small audience with a much larger budget that you would want to spend to get in front of that audience a lot, a lot of times, that was a terrible way to explain it. You just wanna have a budget that makes sense with your audience size. That's a better way to say it. So this is just a rule of thumb that I, I like to use, but it's not perfect and it's not from Facebook directly. But if you've got under 10,000 people and you just wanna get in front of them at a very kind of gradual amount, having a three to five day, $5 a day budget should work just fine. You can get more aggressive with it. That's perfectly fine, but you may burn to that audience in a matter of weeks or maybe a month. And then after that, you're gonna start seeing your cost for the same amount of traffic go way up, or you're just not gonna get as much from it because people have already seen that, that ad. Same thing with 10 to 30,000 audience, five to $10 a day, 30 to 100,000, 10 to $20 a day, 100 to 300, 20 to 40. Now again, you can get more aggressive. You can double these numbers if you want, maybe even triple. Just realize that these numbers are based on like, just slowly working through the audience. If you're trying to hit season really hard, then double or triple these numbers, just realize you will probably burn to that audience a little bit faster or a lot faster and uh, just be ready for that, that's all. So again, these are starting points, they're not end points and this is not a you know hard rule, this is just kind of average to start. So lastly for tracking, this one's kind of a, uh, a bit of a rabbit hole when it comes to tracking because everybody does things differently. Um, but for sure you wanna make sure you have the Facebook pixel on your website. You also wanna make sure your booking platform has the Facebook pixel in it too. A lot of booking platforms like integrate directly with Facebook. And that's how you get your sales data back into Facebook so they can optimize for purchases. Really good idea. If you're using leads, then you also want to use the pixel because that's where you can track leads. Maybe they've gone to a certain, you know, thank you page on your website. You can track that as a conversion. Facebook can see it. Or if you're using lead ads, that's already going to be tracked as a conversion. Um, it won't be on your website. It'll be through the lead forms. So it's very, very simple. You don't have to do any outside setup for that's actually my last point that I didn't mean to skip down to here. Um, some other things to note, which might be nerd level, but we'll just talk about them. Facebook has a, a default seven day uh, click through attribution window with a one day view, which is just fancy to say that they only track conversions for about a week. And then after that week, you might still get sales and conversions, but they're not gonna report on them natively in your, um, in your ad reporting. So this comes up a lot because people are like not seeing any sales. They're like, man, I feel like we are getting sales. They're not showing up. Is the tracking working? And sometimes the tracking isn't working. And, and sometimes it's just the attribution window. Facebook is only tracking people for that seven day window. So if they click today and they book in 14 days or 30 days from now, there's a very good chance you're not going to see that data reported back into Facebook and you're not going to see that sale. You still make the money. You still got the sale. You still got what you wanted from the spend, but Facebook is not getting the data back to them and you're not seeing it in a reporting. The other thing is that there's this iOS 14 update everybody was talking about two years ago. And this is basically where um, Apple 
decided to give people the option to not be tracked on apps. And so when they did that, only about 10 or 15% of people allowed themselves to be, to be tracked. I'm actually one of them. I was like, I wanna see the ads. So that really hurt Facebook and their ability to track conversions, which means that there's some workarounds they've been trying to use like uh, the conversions API. It's not perfect. It probably will never be as good as it used to be. Um, but just be aware that the bottom line here is the third point. You're just not seeing the entire picture when it comes to tracking, meaning you're probably getting better results than you're seeing. We have seen some cases where Facebook over reports and sometimes just how your tracking is being implemented. But for the most part, you're typically not seeing all the results that Facebook is probably driving. And one point of that is the awareness factor, the brand factor. So if you've got you know 30 or 40,000 people who see your ad, but none of them click, a fair number of those people are probably gonna go on Google search later and find you. It may not be today, it might be in a week from now, they just remember you, they're seeing your ad all over, this, all over the place, or people are mentioning you because they see you on Facebook, they're tagging other people, whatever. So there's value that comes from these ads that are just not trackable or definitely not easily trackable that um, you can't really put a finger on, but you're gonna start seeing a result from it over time. And so I like to tell people, look, based on the way Facebook tracking works and the way the world works, and this banner factor or this uh, brand factor, just assume, just look at this more like a branding experiment. Doesn't mean you don't expect any sales from it. Doesn't mean you won't get sales. It just means they might happen. You may not see them, but you are getting out there and you can easily see that. Is it worth it for you? And that's another reason why, you know, having low budgets can also work well because you know you're getting both direct sales and brand awareness. And then lastly, I kind of already mentioned this, but lead and messenger ads. So lead ads we talked about having the form on Facebook, messenger ads or ad campaigns where basically people click on the ad and start a conversation with you. So a lot of operators are not using these to my knowledge, but they can work really well in other industries where like the main thing is you just want to start a conversation with somebody, you want to answer questions. Um, it can work really well like in a home service niche or, or places where people are like, hey, how much is this? So you just have a bunch of questions around it. So it's not something that I'd say every operator should use. It might be worthwhile if you've got the manpower to respond to people and you like inviting conversation, it can work really well. We've seen some really good cost for leads with uh, messenger ads, but again, it's just to be tested. So I wouldn't take that as gospel, just give it a shot and see if it works for you. And that is basically it. So if there's more information that you want me to dive into at any one of these points, let me know. Um, I will probably do, I will be doing more videos around some of the nitty gritty on this stuff, but for now, it's just a high level overview for a simple Facebook campaign setup for tour operators. Hope you like it. If you have any questions, leave them in the comments below. Thanks for watching.